Hi. Uh, today I want to show you how to write software or a thesis or a paper um, from your iPad. And what you need is a, a computer, or a, preferably Linux, um, but I'm sure that it would also work with a Mac OS, um, where you can install all the tools that you need. Um, and if those tools are command line tools, then it's going to be super easy for you to work with your iPad. Uh, if you have uh, mostly GUI based tools, then you can also connect to your computer with remote desktop, but I will not get into this today. Um, so this is basically just, I'm going to show you what is my setup. And so, um, I mean, obviously you need to make sure that you have SSH installed on your computer. So an SSH server needs to be uh, running. So that would be my um, on my computer. That one's already running. And so um, if you have control over your public IP, then you need to um, forward in your router the IP address or the, the, the port, the 22 SSH port to your machine don't have control over um, your public IP like I do because I am using um, someone else's network to connect to the internet um, then you have to somehow expose this this port to a public IP and so what I use is called ngrok and so um, it's a it's a tool that exposes Oops, maybe not grok, but ngrok. It's basically exposing a port um, from, from your local machine to something external. And so I have the free version, so I just get a, uh, a default URL from them and then um, some, some port and the port always changes. So every time I restart the thing, I have to recheck the the online um, UI to check what my port is. Um, this goes to my Raspberry Pi. I don't have this running on my actual computer, but you can both have it run on your computer or on a Pi if you just want to use a Pi as a, a bastion into your network. And so um, I chose this to be the European um, data center because I'm in Europe. And that way I don't have a lag that is that bad. And so, yeah, I mean, the, what the, the basic um, setup is plenty fine if all you do is a single SSH connection into your home server uh, or computer, which is what I do. So uh, let's say you have an ngrok setup, as I do. I have it on my Pi, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then you want to... Um, connect to it from your from your iPad. So let's just look at how I did that on the iPad. Mm, what I do is I install or I installed an application called Termios and it's um, basically an SSH client. And so you can save several SSH clients or SSH um, connections there. Uh, I think here I'm explaining again what Ngrok is, so let's skip that. Uh, and so I have as you can see, I have my Pi set up um, both internally and externally via ngrok. Um, and you can also see that it kind of recognizes the, the, the SSH server. Um, so it already, I mean, even though I'm connecting through ngrok, it tells me, you know, this is a Raspberry Pi and this is Ubuntu. So that's kind of, kind of neat to see. Um, and so I think the connection didn't work here because I had to re um, set up my 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 port, which had changed. And so the moment um, that is good, I'm on my Pi. And um, I mean, it, from within my network, I can obviously do the same. Mm, I can connect to that. Actually, let's. Uh, Let's go through the, the procedure once manually. Uh, 
and so that you can see how it works if you don't have it set up. And then I'll show the whole thing again on the tablet. So I would connect to, I don't actually remember how to set the port on an SSH. I think I can just do this, but I'm not sure. No. check how I'm how I was set up on the iPad. Actually, let's just go through the video. Alright, I'm on my Pi. Do I have something to do? Maybe. I was con trying to connect from my Pi to the Pi through Endrock, which might not be so smart. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, um, I mean, this is, again, on the Pi, I have it set to automatically start, so it's automatically uh, restarting whenever I... Um, connect or whenever I connect the, the Pi to the power connector. If you want to always be able to connect to your machine, then you would have to do something similar. I mean, uh, you could just include it in your startup applications um, on your working machine or here on the Pi, I had it set up to have a background screen session so that I can later um, just, you know, reattach to it um, if I want to change something. And so, um, yeah, you can see kind of the, the configuration call. What you get when you download ngrok is just a binary. And so I tell it to uh, expose a TCP or a port with the TCP protocol, uh, which region I tell it not to log and um, that it's a daemon. And of course, port 22. Mm. And so, Mm -hmm. What am I? Ah, oh, yeah, I'm setting it up again. So that'll be ten twenty eight, and so ah, here we go. Here we have the connect or the the setup. Let's go back a little. Uh, the setup for the Engrok on the iPad. Um, actually, let me open this as VLC because. I have no precise control over where exactly I am. All right, so here we go. Uh, so the host name is just, you know, the IP that we also have. Um, here, so TCP EU NGROC IO. And then, as I said, the port for me always changes because I have the free version. Mm, and then, of course, username and password. And then it connects. And um, so that way you can get into your machine, even though you don't have control of your public IP. So, I mean, obviously, on the iPad, having an SSH client is already kind of neat, but it's not that big of a deal, I guess. So what I do then is I, I connect from my Pi, which is just five meters from here, directly to my machine. And so, um, yeah, I connect to the machine and then I'm 
on my computer and on my computer I always have a tmux session running and I save that session when I shut it off which I rarely do but uh, it saves the tmux session so that when I start the thing up again I still have my my tmux um, setups and so I usually have a couple of um, kind of workspaces for my my, my tmux environments uh, and so when I write my thesis uh, which I write in latex then I, I can also do that from the uh, tablet and that's kind of neat because um, otherwise I would end up having to wait until I'm back home to continue working on my thesis or I would have to switch to something like a cloud-based uh, Word um, application. I mean these these modern tools obviously allow you so much freedom into where you use it and where you where you write and where you uh, have your data it's all in the cloud but if you don't want to have your data in the cloud like I do or you want to have it in latex or you want to have some more customizable tools then obviously it doesn't get as easy anymore um, and so um, I prefer writing in in Vim because I have all the all my tools set up there and so um, this is now completely possible from the iPad and so you can um, have all your tools set up in your local machine uh, and you know if you if you do all your stuff in one tmux environment then you can just leave your computer um, you can even turn it off if you have some wake on LAN scripts um, set up and then you can do all of the things that you would usually do on your computer from your iPad because you are on your computer that's also a nice thing so you're safely connected um, you're on your iPad and you barely need any data because the, uh, the the SSH terminal client is so massively lightweight. Uh, it doesn't even compare to screen sharing. So you can do this through a 3G hotspot from your phone and you won't even notice the data that's going through there. Um, of course, you do need a good um, latency. So if you have a 3G or 4G uh, provider that might offer peak performances but it's terribly laggy which it is here in Italy um, then that's obviously nothing good but if you have good latency so you know anything below 40 50 milliseconds then it should be just fine and so I can write with this uh, in a cafe or at friends houses and I still have my entire home development environment, which with all the auto completion and control P and all the fun things that you can get in Vim. Uh, yeah, so I'll do another video on my LaTeX setup, but I don't use the iPad for that, um, or you know, a recording of the iPad. So watch out, look out for that. Thanks.